The Bible talks about different ingredients that we need to add to our life, add to our faith, and Peter lists these down for us. And it'll be good if we can develop these qualities and make sure that these are there in our lives. In fact, Peter, he says, I want to make sure, I want to ensure that there'll be a reminder of this even after I go away. And for Peter, this seemed so valuable that he wanted these qualities to be built in the people to whom he was writing to. And so it applies to us as well. Second Peter chapter 1 and verses 5, 5 to 8. For this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, uh, love. If these things, things are yours, if these are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The fifth ingredient he lists here, he mentions here, is this ingredient called godliness or purity. So when we look at godliness or purity or holiness, you know, many times we think that it means that I need to go away. I need to go to an isolated place. I need to separate myself from everything that's uh, unholy. And I need to go to a, uh, uh, you know, a far away place, cut myself off, away from people, away from all influences, and then I'll be holy. But actually, when we look at the godly life or godliness that the Bible talks about, it's, it's not that at all. It means that right where we are, right where we are in the community of where we are placed in, God asks us to be godly. He asks us to be pure and he says, be holy for I am holy. So this godliness or purity is living out, living out what God has already made us on the inside. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21 says that in him, we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. As new creations, we've been clothed in the robes of righteousness. As new creations, we've been washed by the blood of Jesus. We have been justified and we have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. And that's a spiritual reality. That is who we are in the spirit. So there could be many challenges to purity. There could be many challenges like temptations. There could be pressures to, to make sure that we conform to standards of the world and so on. The one way to face it is to submit to God. What does submission mean? Submission means that I adhere to God's standard. Submission means I come and I surrender to God's ways. So when I submit to God and when I resist the enemy, it says, the scripture of the promise is that the enemy will flee. But submission follows first. Submission starts and then we resist the enemy. So there's no use resisting the enemy without first submitting to God. So as we work on this uh, quality of purity and holiness and godliness, just want to invite us to submit to God and resist the enemy. We will overcome temptations. We will overcome uh, 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 invitation to live a life that is apart from God. So today as we pray, let's pray and let's ask God to strengthen us. Let's ask God to give us a heart so that we can submit to His ways and submit to His will. Father, we pray today and we ask that even as you've invited us to live a life of holiness, we know that it is possible. And I pray that uh, that even as we live a life engaging with different kinds of people, with different values and different standards, Lord, we pray that we will stay holy, that we will stray, stay on course, that we will be holy just as you've called us to be holy, holy God. And as we live this life, I pray that we will submit to you, submit to your ways, submit to your promises, submit to your standards. And as we resist the enemy, we know that the enemy will flee. Father, we pray that we will live victorious lives and we thank you that you've called us to this. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.